uh, Argentina and Brazil uh, had, were paying interest rates of 45% annually on the dollar debt that they had uh, in the run up uh, in, by 1990. They sold them to uh, Brazil and Argentina uh, billionaires. They sold them to uh, the president's family, the central banker's family, uh, and to the domestic oligarchy. And essentially, they were paying themselves. Uh, Argentina and Brazil uh, had, were paying interest rates of 45% annually on the dollar debt that they had uh, in the run up uh, in, by 1990. Uh, that's in the wake, wake of uh, Mexico's default when uh, uh, nobody would lend money uh, to Latin America anymore because uh, but the Americans and the Europeans uh, realized that uh, uh, already the third world, uh, what they called then the third world, uh, had reached its debt limit and so no more credit uh, and they certainly were not going to help these countries develop. How is it that if Brazil and Argentina were paying 45% on their uh, dollar debts, Americans wouldn't buy them. The Europeans wouldn't buy them. I know that because I was working for Scudder Stevens at the time, and uh, we set up the first sovereign debt fund uh, in the world. And uh, uh, our salesmen tried to sell it throughout Europe, couldn't do it, sell it in uh, uh, America couldn't do it. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Scudder worked with uh, Merrill Lynch uh, to, uh, to try to sell uh, the, uh, the fund's shares that were going to be buying Mexican and uh, uh, Argentine and Brazilian debt. And uh, where did they, they finally were able to sell them. Where could they sell them? They sold them to uh, Brazil and Argentina uh, billionaires. They sold them to uh, the president's family, the central banker's family, uh, and to the domestic oligarchy. And it turned out that while uh, uh, Latin Americans were saying, oh, the uh, dollar debts, uh, are uh, that's Yankee imperialism, it's bankrupting it, it turned out that the Yankee imperialists were their own oligarchy that it was the Mexicans uh, that owned their foreign debt. It was the Brazilians that owned their foreign debt. It was the Argentinian uh, uh, oligarchy that owned its foreign debt. And essentially they were paying, uh, paying themselves. Uh, and uh, they, uh, that kind of debt, uh, is, it's going to be a problem in canceling out their debts now because their debts aren't really foreign debts. They're debts owed by the government to their own domestic uh, oligarchy that uh, insists in denominating them in hard currency, not in their uh, domestic currency, because the oligarchy has wrecked the economy by its uh, class war against uh, labor. Well, what kind of debts can, can be read out? Well, the only kind of debt that I can see uh, Brazil's and uh, Argentina's oligarchy being willing to cancel is the debt to the IMF. The IMF uh, in the last month has said, we've established a new principle uh, because of Ukraine. We at the IMF are acting as part of the American uh, military establishment, uh, the Defense Department. And uh, because uh, we're uh, basically, and the IMF is a military uh, financing organization, uh, we know that Ukraine can't afford to pay its debts because uh, it's uh, willing to uh, fight for us uh, against Russia to weaken Russia so that Russia can't support China and Russia and China together can't support Asia in becoming independent. So uh, we're going to not ask uh, uh, Ukraine to pay its debts. And even though Ukraine is at war and uh, our articles of agreement uh, say we can't we can't make a loan to a country at war. Uh, we're now in uh, what America calls a rules-based order. We make the rules. And our rule is uh, we're not going to ask money for Ukraine because it can't pay. Well, what a perfect example for uh, uh, Brazil, uh, Argentina, and the global South countries to say, well, wait a minute. If you can't, Ukraine can't pay, then it does uh, the IMF. And the IMF is not ask asking for repayment. And in fact, the IMF is giving Ukraine even more money. Uh, uh, to go uh, and fight. Well, the same's happening for us because part of the war in Ukraine are the American sanctions that have been imposed against uh, Russia and uh, Iran and Venezuela.
Venezuela against selling their oil, selling their gas, and selling their food. And the result of America's sanctions has been to cause a huge rise in uh, food and energy prices, because now uh, countries are not able, uh, certainly Europe, European countries, uh, are not allowed to buy uh, Russian uh, gas or, uh, fo or food, and uh, th that's caused uh, a huge uh, uh, balance of payments crisis for the uh, Latin America, Africa, and much of Asia, because now uh, ha they have a problem. If if they uh, pay their uh, foreign debts, how can they afford to import the uh, food and the oil that they need to run their economies, uh, to keep their factories going, to keep their cars and transportation going? Uh, how do they feed themselves? Uh, uh, are they going to uh, really be willing to impose a famine on themselves for food and to uh, let their economy slow down like uh, Germany's economy is uh, slowing down, uh, closing down for lack of energy, uh, just because uh, America says uh, we want to fight against Russia and China because they want to uh, become uh, independent. And any country that becomes independent is by definition uh, uh, able to to be free of our control. And if we can't control them, then uh, they will uh, use their growth to help their own populations. We want their growth uh, to be used to, just like under colonialism, to help the American economy, to help the European economy. But the global South countries must not be permitted to use their economic growth to help their own economy. They must not raise their living standards. They must not raise their educational levels. They must not raise their uh, capital investment. Governments must not uh, invest in infrastructure and uh, a mixed economy, but leave it all to the private sector. And the private sector in these countries has to be kept weak enough so that basically they're in partnerships with uh, foreign investors and uh, it's a client oligarchy. Uh, the war in Ukraine is not simply a military war. It's a war over what kind of uh, economic and political rules will uh, the world have? Will the world essentially have debt peonage of uh, most of the world's population owing money and income to the golden billion that is the Western populations of uh, Europe and uh, North America? Or will other countries be able to finally break free of uh, the financial colonialism uh, that they've had and use their uh, uh, their planning and their uh, resources uh, for themselves. Even if you can uh, re reject your uh, debts to uh, the IMF and the World Bank, uh, that's still going to leave the uh, uh, the existing bonds that are held by bondholders in uh, the private sector uh, in place. But at least the logic for uh, annulling your debt to the IMF as odious debts is that the IMF is used to junk economics. The IMF said, you can get richer by making your population poor. If you can just grind down your labor and prevent it from unionizing, uh, uh, make it uh, uh, poor, you'll have enough profits uh, to pay off your debts. This is junk economics because austerity does not help you grow. It makes you poor and poor and poor. The IMF has imposed this junk economics by military force throughout Latin America. And as a result of the Pinochet coup d'etat in Chile, you had the Operation Condor and other terror operations spread to Brazil and uh, Argentina. This is the result of war. And the only way of uh, resisting this war, it can't be done militarily. Uh, all you can do militarily is uh, uh, protect yourself, but it can, you can just simply uh, isolate yourself. And uh, what the United States is doing is actually helping the global South become independent, because by isolating Russia, China, Iran, Venezuela, it's begun to isolate the whole rest of the world and what it's really done is isolate the United States and uh, Europe from the rest of the world. And uh, the rest of the world can say, OK, uh, we can't afford to hold uh, uh, our foreign exchange reserves in dollars anymore because you've just grabbed uh, Mexicans gold. The United States has said uh, uh, the State Department has the right to appoint uh, the head of any foreign country. And we've chosen uh, a puppet, uh, Mr. Guaido, and uh, we've assigned all of uh, Venezuela's gold to uh, Mr. Guaido, uh, even the Venezuelan part, uh, parliament has said, well, 
you know, we don't want a, this guy. He's just an American stooge. Uh, but the Americans say, well, we're going to grab uh, any money uh, that a country has that does anything that resists our takeover of the economy. So they grabbed uh, as soon as uh, uh, Russia defended itself from the uh, uh, from the NATO uh, war against uh, uh, the Eastern Russian speaking provinces of Ukraine, uh, the United States confiscated uh, uh, Russia's dollar holdings abroad. Uh, it's now threatening to confiscate all of China's holdings, saying, China, if you uh, uh, don't let uh, the United States uh, essentially uh, have a replay of 1997 and take over uh, the Asian economies as uh, we did back uh, then in the currency crisis, we're going to grab all of your money uh, abroad. So uh, the United States has forced countries to finally say, well, we've got to create uh, an economic and a uh, political uh, alternative. You've mentioned uh, what Lula wants to do in Brazil. And Brazil faces the same problem that Russia, China, and their European neighbors face in how do you create an international banking institution to avoid dealing with dollars and to make loans not to impoverish economies by insisting on austerity programs, but how do you make loans to actually help countries uh, develop? And how do you build up their infrastructure? Well, uh, an international bank empowered to create money needs to have a political agreement as to who are you going to create uh, money for and uh, give the uh, currency for. Europe lasts does not have a bank like that. Uh, and it's very hard to do uh, in uh, Latin America or even Asia right now. So uh, really the the only way to begin such a uh, uh, an international financial institution is uh, the way that uh, uh, Russia and China and Saudi Arabia are doing. Uh, you have the petro yuan. You have uh, countries uh, making currency swaps in their own currency, and members of the bank will uh, all contribute a given amount of foreign currency, and uh, other countries are uh, going to uh, will be empowered to draw on this currency and to run into debt uh, uh, to the bank. But the bank is not going to uh, impose uh, uh, financial serfdom on these countries. Uh, the bank will uh, essentially uh, take a equity uh, share, not a debt share. As I said, uh, the first uh, step will probably be uh, uh, fi financed by uh, the uh, most the strongest economies, China uh, and Russia. And that's what makes today so much different from the global fracture that began uh, uh, 50 years ago, 70 years ago, uh, from uh, the non-aligned nations. The non-aligned nations wanted to create a new international economic order. Sukarno in Indonesia and other leaders saw what had to be done, but they didn't have the economic uh, power to become uh, independent. They didn't have uh, their own ability to feed themselves uh, because the uh, the World Bank had underdeveloped their uh, agriculture and only made loans for export crops, not for uh, food crops for themselves. Uh, they weren't able to really make the break uh, away uh, economically because they weren't large enough. Well, now things are different. China and Russia and Iran together, you have Eurasia emerging that uh, has the center of the world population. It's large enough so it, it's not as dependent as Indonesia, Latin America, uh, Cuba, uh, other countries were uh, 50 to 70 years ago. And that's why the United States says that China and is our ultimate uh, enemy, is the enemy of the United States. We must destroy China uh, economy. We want other uh, parts of the country to break away so that the, uh, there can never be a government strong enough to coordinate economic growth. And China, Russia, and the global South will continue to be dependent on the United States for their food, for their information technology, for their energy, because the United States is controlling the world's oil supply, and uh, even for their military uh, arms. So the United States can simply uh, turn off their supply of uh, repairs and armaments. So that really is the fate of the world. And uh, the President Biden says, well, the world is dividing. The war in Ukraine is a war to divide the world over the next 20 or 30 years between democracy and uh, autocracy. By democracy, he means a financial oligarchy. 
backed by the military uh, and with military states in uh, uh, America's satellites. Uh, by autocracy, he means uh, a mixed economy with the government investing along with uh, in uh, basic infrastructure and government uh, providing uh, the money uh, and credit supply uh, and treating money and credit and banking as a public utility. Uh, and that is what used to be called socialism. So you can sort of paraphrase what Biden is saying is uh, what Rosa Luxemburg said. The fight is between barbarism or socialism. Barbarism is what uh, President Biden calls democracy. Uh, namely the financial uh, oligarchy of the US, of NATO uh, countries. And uh, socialism is what you're seeing uh, in China and, uh, uh, what you, uh, and what you're going to be seeing throughout uh, uh, the global south as uh, the government uh, takes the lead in uh, providing basic education, transportation, communication, credit. When global south uh, students uh, or Chinese students or Asian students are sent to American universities, they're told well, this isn't a free market. A free market is one without government. A free market is one where without government, it's not run by government planning uh, or taxes. It's run by the financial planners, by Wall Street, by London, the Paris Bourse. And uh, a, a free market is one uh, 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 run by finance uh, creditors in their own self-interest. And uh, that's what America is uh, promoting throughout the world. And uh, this is when you realize that this is the strategy <clears throat> of the United States, then that uh, dictates uh, what uh, Brazil uh, should do uh, and what it needs to do to become uh, independent, uh, to create a, a Latin American bank for mutual support uh, with the uh, Latin America uh, essentially joining the BRICS uh, with Brazil and uh, working with uh, its counterparts in Asia uh, and uh, other countries uh, uh, with uh, much like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It will all be part of the uh, Eurasian-centered, uh, non-white uh, uh, four-fifths of the world, uh, the part of the world that is not part of uh, the the uh, golden uh, billion uh, that are the, the creditor nations. The uh, creditors uh, don't want to have to uh, militarily occupy a country to take it over. No country to any longer, no democracy, neither the United States or Europe can afford another Vietnam. Americans uh, and Europeans will not permit a, a draft of enough of the population to become soldiers because they don't want to die, especially they don't want to die to impose policies that they don't believe in. So what uh, are the uh, uh, former colonial countries going to do? They'll have uh, client oligarchies abroad. Uh, that's what Rome did uh, in antiquity. That would have their own uh, uh, local uh, uh, representatives uh, or uh, uh, essentially with a, a, a local government Governor, but also uh, local uh, upper class to uh, essentially fight uh, the same, uh, fight the class war to uh, uh, be take us sort of take some profits for themselves as they uh, send the export earnings and uh, the monopoly earnings of uh, creditor countries out of their country to others. You have to look at your oligarchy is essentially being uh, members of the foreign financial army that's trying to occupy you. And uh, this means there has to be a class war uh, and uh, there has to be basically a socialist uh, kind of uh, uh, in, uh, constitution uh, writ written to uh, prevent uh, an oligarchy from taking over and uh, uh, institutions that are free of uh, foreign debt and a, a definition that uh, certain principles that every country uh, should be self-sufficient. And uh, Europe uh, faced this problem uh, in 1648. There, there was a 30 years war that absolutely devastated Europe. And uh, they finally agreed on in 1648 that no country should interfere with another country. And uh, Brazil, Latin America, uh, Asian countries, African countries should realize that uh, their domestic oligarchy is part of foreign interference uh, of themselves because this oligarchy has been put in power by uh, the colonial powers. And uh, the oligarchy that the colonialism era created 
uh, is still in power, just like uh, in Russia. We know that the Americans backed a kleptocracy there that registered Russian oil and uh, Russian uh, real estate and land and natural resources and electric companies in their own name. This can be taxed away. Uh, you don't have to actually nationalize it uh, because nationalization uh, uh, can be viewed as uh, an act of war and there can be a military response. You can pass a tax system by, by a rent tax. Uh, what the uh, f uh, creditor countries want is not really profits. They're not industrial capitalist country uh, uh, entities. Finance capitalism doesn't want profit. It wants economic rent and interest. Uh, and if you can pre if you can essentially tax away the economic rent, the land rent, the natural resource rent, the oil rent, the mineral rent, and the monopoly rent of uh, public enterprises, then uh, you will uh, cut off the taproot of uh, NATO uh, and American financial imperialism. So uh, by uh, adopting a, a, a tax policy, uh, a socialist tax policy, you can create what Adam Smith and John Stuart Mill uh, and the, a subsequent classical economists called a free market. To the whole 19th century, to Adam Smith, uh, to all of the, and his followers, to uh, uh, ending up uh, uh, with Marx and uh, uh, the, the, Marx's whole generation of free market was a market without economic rent. A free market was one without predatory banking. A free market was one in which uh, governments uh, took over banking. Governments received uh, the land rent. Governments received the natural resource rent and used it to uh, invest in uh, capital formation in uh, the public sector in roads, transportation, education, and healthcare. So uh, basically, what the third world uh, and now uh, the global south needs to do is create the, exactly the kind of free market that uh, the NATO countries say they want to create. But it'll, it's the free market of Adam Smith and uh, John Stuart Mill and Marx. Uh, not uh, uh, debt serfdom, which is the uh, uh, the creditor country's idea of a free market, which is their free market freedom to conquer uh, the whole non-white world and take all of its mineral wealth and monopoly wealth for itself. Uh, it can be done, and uh, that's what uh, I've described much of that uh, in my book on uh, uh, in uh, my recent books. The Destiny of Civilization and others, and it's what uh, this uh, group uh, of the Global University is trying to uh, uh, outline and bring about. <laughs>this is the big problem that Lenin talked about. He said, in order to have a revolution, there has to be a uh, revolutionary situation. Uh, and it's, it's very difficult uh, uh, to uh, fight against the military. But ultimately, uh, you need a political party to uh, uh, outline uh, what your economic program is and what your socialist principles are. Uh, in the United States, uh, the public uh, uh, poll polls show that most more Americans think that socialism is a good word than capitalism is a good word. So uh, certainly in America, uh, America cannot use the military against the population because the population uh, uh, doesn't believe that uh, finance capitalism is better than socialism. Uh, there has to be a uh, uh, a public uh, uh, discussion and uh, 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 a party, uh, uh, po political parties, uh, to uh, convince the military to do what uh, Russia's military did in its revolution. The military, uh, the navy, went over to the side of the of uh, Lenin and the and the uh, uh, the Soviets, uh, and that's. Uh, how they won. Same thing happened in China. Uh, it required a military, uh, a, a military fight. The fight is uh, going to be bloody. It's going to be hard. Uh, and uh, but it has to begin with a, a statement of principles explaining just why uh, the uh, the neoliberal uh, design for Brazilian life is going to make the country poorer and poorer, and ultimately uh, impoverish the. Uh, uh, the one percent itself. Well, back in Greece and in Rome and even in uh, ancient uh, Judea uh, uh, and the Jewish lands, the uh, the revolutionaries came from the upper class. It was the upper uh, Julius Caesar 
uh, and uh, Catiline, who wanted to cancel the debts, uh, were from the upper class. Uh, you have uh, most of the Marxists uh, in the West uh, are from the upper class. The Marxism did not make uh, much leeway in America through uh, in the working class, but uh, it, it was a, a middle class uh, phenomenon, uh, as it was in Russia. Uh, uh, and uh, you 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 have to be get you have to get a sizable portion of uh, the upper class and the middle class uh, on your side. Uh, and uh, the United States will respond by targeted assassination. Uh, the United States said it worked in Rome. Rome prevented a uh, uh, a revolution and uh, made uh, its upper class strong enough to bring on the dark age to destroy the economy uh, because it was willing to assassinate anyone who didn't agree with the free market. And what a democracy is, is the right of uh, uh, the ruling class to uh, assassinate and uh, prevent any alternative to uh, the uh, neoliberal uh, economic uh, uh, teaching. So uh, that's why the uh, England and the United States have banned uh, Russian TV uh, from their countries. They're told that Ukraine is uh, uh, winning, beating up Russia, and soon Russia will fall apart and be divided into uh, five five countries. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, no freedom of uh, uh, speech uh, in the United States or Europe anymore. Uh, and uh, likewise, they're trying, uh, they're doing their best to prevent uh, China and Russia from explaining why they're successful. And uh, the United States economy is not successful. So what's necessary is uh, there has to be some uh, a combination of vehicles. You need an educational uh, vehicle system. You need uh, publications. Uh, uh, you you need to uh, e explain people why the uh, uh, you know, North America and Europe are moving into a chronic depression. That's sort of the uh, effect of creditors taking uh, power and bringing on a dark age. Uh, uh, if you can popularize this enough, uh, you at some point, much of the army is going to go over uh, to your side. Right now in Brazil, uh, both Bolsonaro had hoped that the army would overthrow Lula, and the army didn't. Uh, so that's a very positive first step. Lula has had to uh, make uh, deals in order to survive. Uh, in his very first uh, 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 term of office, uh, he had to make deals with the banks not to really uh, threaten their vital interests. Uh, the banks said, uh, you can develop your domestic economy and uh, help the poor people. You can help uplift uh, welfare programs, uh, uh, but you can't uh, threaten uh, our uh, interests. Gradually, uh, uh, Lula has to uh, create a tax system uh, and uh, you know that will uh, redistribute uh, the wealth and reestablish uh, the government as uh, the provider of credit, not uh, banks uh, controlled by uh, uh, United States and European owners. Uh, all of this can be done. Uh, initially, you need part of the upper class and certainly the middle class uh, on your side. Uh, and the middle class and upper class, not only of Brazil, but of neighboring countries uh, on your side. Uh, and uh, this ideological uh, organization uh, has to uh, prepare the ground for uh, the uh, uh, more uh, physical war that uh, has, is probably going to erupt at some point.